What's up again, everybody? All right, we're getting ready to make a pickup here. Uh, Canagra Foods in Council Bluffs, Iowa. We're currently northbound on I-29. Yeah, I just crossed I, uh, I, uh, the 40 mile marker a minute ago, uh, not even a minute ago. Uh, we're just under 10 miles away from our exit in Council Bluffs. Uh, yes, it's going to be right, right about where uh, I-29 and I-80 meet up. Actually, uh, it's off the same exit that the T-8 truck stop is off. Uh, if I go on the other side of the, as you take uh, South Expressway, which is the street that the T-8 is on, uh, instead of going south of the of 80 where T-8 is at, go north. Yeah, go I don't know, maybe a couple miles or something like that, or if even that. Up the road, there's a couple of curves on left and right, and then uh, be a right turn on the 16th Street. Turn right there, and then uh, on the left side of the road will be the entrance for Canadra. Uh, I have not personally been to this super before. In fact, uh, I did some asking around about it, because... Uh, I didn't know if this was going to be a live load or a drop and hook, and so I asked my DM about that, and also uh, she told me it was going to be a, probably a live load. And uh, my load info didn't say anything about reefer temp to set now. Uh, what temperature to set my reefer unit at? I mean, uh, 40, mile marker 42 here, and uh, off at Air Force Base off this exit as well. Off it hangs over there on the other side of the river in, uh, in Nebraska. But anyway, uh, I'm expecting it's going to be some kind of a chill load. I don't know what exactly it's going to be though. Canagra, they do a lot of food products, so I, any number of things it could be. It's probably some kind of meat based stuff though. Maybe prepared foods or something. That's what uh, Canagra is mostly known for, is uh, packaged or you know, prepared type foods. Anyway, this load's going to be going to my home, Victorville, California. In fact, it's going so close to my home that I can literally walk from where the, where the receiver is at to my house. Going to uh, Maricold in Victorville. And also, probably at the end of this video, um, I, I'm probably going to, I may have some footage for you guys, uh, kind of a meet and greet with uh, one of my friends who I originally met through uh, Scotty D67's channel. Uh, Scotty D and I are friends, and just as you know, Scotty D used to drive for JCT himself. And we have a lot of the same mutual friends because, uh, yeah, I would, I would follow his channel. Yeah, so we all got kind of like a little click going on. Uh, a lot of you guys watching already know this. Uh, a lot of you guys are my regulars. Uh, same as part of that same click. I always have some new people around who might not be familiar. So he has a much bigger following than I do, too. Uh, he's got, he's got 17,000 subscribers. But anyway, uh, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Carl Green, uh, he lives in Omaha and he's, uh, he's retired from driving now, so uh, he's planning to meet up with me at the TA and the uh, Council Bluffs. Uh, after I get to, because uh, when I get to picking my load up, I'm going to probably have to stop at the TA there to, uh, to scale it on the way out, I assume. My load info did suggest that it was going to be like a 44,000 pound load, so I do expect it to be a heavy one that I'll, that I'll definitely want to scale for. Uh, I'll have to keep in mind that it's going to California, so, oh well then again it's going to Victorville, so. Might be one of those cases where how the load scales out might dictate which route I, uh, I take or what route options I have because I'm already not sure if I want to take 80 across to Salt Lake City and down 15 as it is because we're 
October now. And there was some snow in, uh, a little bit of snow in Wyoming, uh, I think yesterday. I haven't looked at the snow forecast yet, but uh, I'm always wary of what the weather is going to be like in Wyoming. So if it looks like there's going to be any chance of snow going through there. Uh, no, now, I'll, I'll take the extra hundred mile or so route and uh, work my way down to uh, down to US 54 and uh, hit I 40 and do the grind. All right, Council Bluffs, next eight miles. And I believe it's exit eight at 48 where I 80 is at, and then exit 49. This is my exit for South Expressway. So, yeah, and if it, if I have any scale problems where it, um, where if it's uh, maybe a little bit too heavy on the tail end, you know, where I have to run the tandems further back, then 80 to 15 is definitely going to be out of the question because uh, I can't go through that way station over there with. Uh, Overweight tandems. That way station there, as soon as you get into California on I 15, is open 24 7. Whereas if I take the I 40 route, there is no way station in Cali, and I'm um, not going to go far enough into Cali with it to uh, hit a way station in Cali. So, yeah. Not saying that uh, I'm condoning what I'm doing, but that's something to consider. I don't need to, uh, I'm probably not going to want to hold up getting, uh, getting reworked if all it's going to do is be tail heavy and I can easily take a, a different route where it's legal and in all the other states. And, uh, and I need the local exit so I need to stay that to the right I think. But I actually stay here because it's yeah, the lane to my right I see a sign up ahead saying lane ends. Yeah, we'll stay right here. All right, South Expressway, three-quarter mile away. Now, it was just kind of a spur of the moment thing. I called Carl up to see what he was up to, and... Yeah. I know he wants to meet up for dinner, but one, I don't know if I'm going to have parking uh, available when I get, when I finish. Two, I just, uh, I already ate before I called him up, so unfortunately, I don't really plan on uh, eating, but I'll probably, I'll at least want to meet up with him for a little bit. Say what's up, you know, bro hug kind of stuff and whatever. Alright, that's the 49 year South Expressway. Got TA right over here across the freeway from me. Alright, got Clover Leaf off ramp here. We're going to be making a left turn to head north on Expressway. is that on the light pole? Is that a, like an antenna or something? Interesting. Okay, already seeing the, um, the left curve up here, so I don't think it's going to be very far up the road before I'm already making my right turn on the 16th. I can see their building right there up ahead. So yeah, it's, here's 23rd. Carl mentioned something about 23rd when um, when I talked to him, but yeah, I told him the truck entrance is off 16th. So I don't know. Maybe there's another Canagra plant up here uh, on 23rd or something that I, I don't know about. Speaking of that, I asked him because I've never this is 19th here. 
I've done Canagra before, but only with C Arena. No, that's the 16th, actually. I didn't know that. It said 19th on the other side. All right. And I got my tandems all the way back, too, so. Yeah, I had to have them all the way back for delivery. Uh, to deliver my last load, uh, so. I just went ahead and did it up here with them all the way back still. Not really too worried about it. It's not illegal to do in either Missouri or in Iowa. All right, so 16th right here. I see a truck pulling into their lot right now. All right, tandems are back though. I need extra space and I got cars coming off that, it looks like that South Main Street or whatever it is, right on the other side of the tracks. all these guys by first. The Tandem's all the way back means I need extra, even more space to make my turn. See, Tandem's track perfectly around the curb, not very far away, and uh, and that's how much space I needed with them all the way back. Uh, wouldn't have been that much had I had the Tandem's up uh, further up. Well, there weren't many trains going across there. <laughs> up to a stop sign and it does say slide tandems to the rear so all right my tandems are already back so we're good there oh okay come up to that stop sign arrangement here I guess. Alright so let me get my uh, arrival call in and uh, we'll be back in a second. Okay uh, they said uh, go ahead and park over here uh, by the on the end there. You have seven hours uh, and they'll come, come get me when it's time when they have a door for me. So he's forced to move my shipper receiver for now. Uh, honestly, I think the easiest way to get into that spot that I'm going to have to park in will be to back in, uh, to back in from right here onto this side. But I can. Uh, I'll see. Uh, just for the heck of it, see how much room we actually have over here. And if it's wide enough lane, because uh, I couldn't really tell very well. Uh, this doesn't look like a huge amount of space here, especially given the fact my tandems are all the way back too. We'll get over here as far over as we can, but I don't really think that I'm going to get into that spot. What I'm going to do instead, okay, I'm going to do a jackknife turn. I need to get my tandems as close to this spot as I can, so I'm going to walk it over like this. Try to get me up. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. My tenants are still a mile away. I don't... I'm not really convinced I'm going to make it in here. But we'll, we'll do what we can. Watch my header board on that side. Stay over here 
next to as close as we can to him. No, we're not going to make it. Alright, how about this? Okay, I'm going to come back. door assignment, door 103. Uh, don't want to use drive time, so let's... Time getting into there, but 
And as you see, that's uh, how much more difficult it is to make turns with the town's back. Okay, so the guy said, uh, just back into the door, leave the doors closed. They open them from inside. And once you get docked in, disconnect and then just pull forward a little bit. Uh, kind of like, like when you're at Walmart. Okay, look like there's tons of space here to set up. So, uh, I see 108 on this end where this PFI truck is. Uh, so standard, uh, no two spots pass because the tandems are all the way back. Uh, oh, there's a... Get out of my truck. Alright, it's next to this guy here, so... around here where this guy was at. You'll have room to make Cody. You go. Don't have enough room here to make a full uh, straight back, so we'll just go right there. And it's a wider area, so I don't need to go as far. Yeah. Don't need to go as far over where I'm par uh, parallel with the line. chasing it because I was busy looking over there on oh, yeah, my mirrors, my right side mirrors, but it's alright. So, uh, real simple, easy docking here. Uh, that's all we do. I don't know about checkout, though. I uh, should have asked that guy. Uh, when they're done loading, do I leave when the door light turns green? Or do they bring the bills out to me? Or what? I have a feeling that I wait for them to bring the bills. Because watching trucks leave earlier didn't look like they were spending much time there checking out. So, I don't know. We'll see how things go here. Uh, I assume that I'll watch what other people do. This guy is pulling away from his door now, actually. All right, so yeah. And there was a, one of the dock workers just came over to his truck right when I was uh, getting out to uh, disconnect from mine, you know, from my trailer. So that kind of answered that question a little bit right there. So, all right. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. We'll have some, uh, we'll have the 
finish up footage uh, we go from here over to ta scale the load and probably meet up with carl green all right so see you yeah, again so uh, stay tuned for more Hey guys, we're all done here. All right, so he said, uh, just go ahead and uh, go to the security. I'll go back to security. They'll have my bills there. All right, uh, I've got the fifth wheel underneath the trailer now. Let's raise our bags back up. Watch for pressure indication on my gauge. It's going up now. That means I have uh, good contact between my fifth wheel and the apron. Apron, for those of you guys who don't know trucking, uh, that means the bottom of the trailer. Part of the trailer that the uh, fifth wheel contacts. Alright, now get hooked up. forward close the doors put a load lock in whatever I noticed they changed my reefer temp also um, I had it set to 30 when I got here because I was told it was uh, probably going to be that oh. get some more air into the trailer first I need a slight tandems as well um, yeah they changed the temp to zero though so it's probably going to be a frozen load once I stop here and the air hissing through my red valve, I'll, uh, I'll hop out and yeah, so I can slide my tandems and all that. surprising because this trailer holds air really well so it's interesting that it's uh, taking this much air to, uh, to fill back up yeah. maybe that'll be enough
I forgot that they closed and sealed the doors from inside the building, so it doesn't do me any good to try to put low box in. Good. I think I uh, lost my uh, slide tool. I wait till I get home and get my new one. Between the 40 and the 40 foot 6 inch mark. And the so pins are locked, are put coming out now. Just gotta back up to get it into the 40 foot hole. Alright, we're good to go. Yeah, I stopped my 14, so we're good. The yard move out. Check out that shipper. leave my engine fan on too. Okay, so it turns out, uh... Getting your truck all dirty. You're the one too. One of, our, one of our drivers had a drop trailer incident at the JBS plant in Cactus, Texas today. And it wasn't, uh, apparently wasn't from him not doing uh, proper visual inspection. Uh, he actually had a mechanical failure of his fifth wheel. Uh, I guess there was like uh, metal parts and stuff all over, whatever. And it basically dropped the trailer onto the ground right when he was pulling out of JBS's lot onto that street right there. So. Yeah, and it messed up the landing gear, messed up the, the frame rail where the landing gear is at. Pretty sure they're going to end up writing off that trailer, but I, mean, I don't know for sure, but there's a possibility. Well, all right, these guys are, these guys are done. I see this guy up here walking back with his bills in his hand, though, so I'm going to wait. I don't, I'm guessing this is a double S driver right here. Yeah, he's getting in his truck right now once it gets through pulling out of the way uh, I'll go ahead and pull forward and then go get my bills all right guys we're all set here uh, it's gonna be a heavy one uh, 44 161 is my uh, build out weight and Carl's already over there at the truck stop waiting he's getting impatient in this video when we get over to that TA there. Uh, Wyoming is expecting snow tomorrow so I will be taking this load. I'm going to take a cry. I'll go across I-80 to York, Nebraska and then I'll take US-281 south from there down to uh, I think at least the I-70 and I maybe work my way diagonally down. I uh, haven't decided yet whether I'll cut all the way across to I-25 and then down or if I'll maybe work my way down to Dodge City or somewhere and uh, I hope this is the right way to go. where I came from. I just... Make sure I can get back onto uh, southbound uh, expressway. It looks like, a, yeah, it looks like there might be an opening right there. 
Yeah, there's a traffic light here, in fact, so perfect. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna take 281 down. I think it's to I-70, and then go uh, west on 70, perhaps over to uh, forget the name of that highway. It's a state highway, if I remember right. Uh, it goes down diagonally. I know there's always Raider Express trucks on that road, but this hour, I mean, this time of I mean, by the time I be going through there, I don't think I'll have to worry too much. Uh, I basically worked my way diagonally down. Um, and I can either take 56 and 400 all the way across, like through Boise City and across to uh, I-25, and then take I-25 down to Albuquerque. That or, uh, they say, go through Dodge City, continue down to uh, US-54, and then take 54 down. Um, one of those two is definitely going to be the route, though. So if I take the the, the shortest route, which is uh, 80 all the way across, because uh, I can't use uh, we're not uh, JCT drivers are not allowed to use uh, 70 west of Denver. You know, we're in between Denver and the Utah line more specifically uh, during the winter months. So that's out of the question. The quickest route outside that would be 80 all the way over to Salt Lake City and then down I-15, but in with snow expected in Wyoming tomorrow. Uh, nope. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, we'll go. I'll go through snow if I have to. I don't mind going. I don't have a problem with going through snow, but I do have a problem with dealing with stupid people who create problems because of snow. So I'd rather not deal with that. So we'll just uh, take the easier route, the the, the route that'll have better or better weather to deal with, and call it good. Gotta go to the opposite side of the freeway, and it'll be a right turn. What kind of locomotive is that? It's supposed to be like a privately owned one from that. Uh, doesn't even have any badgings on it or whatever. It has a number on it, but probably just some uh, that belongs to this mill here. Attention. A new important message has arrived. I'm going to take a wild guess. They want me to set the reefer to negative 10 because of the frozen load. Yeah. The bills say zero. And I have it set at zero because that's... Uh, they didn't say uh, what to run it at on the uh, load assignment. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to... It's probably them telling me to uh, set it to negative 10, which I'll do when I get over here. Yeah, Carl did tell me there's plenty of parking available there still, so that's good. I uh, won't feature him in this particular video, but I might do like a little quick live stream or something. Uh, possibly, I don't know, we'll see how things go over there. Let's go with negative one for the temp instead of zero. The system won't accept, okay. All right, so I might, uh, I'll, send, I'll resend the loaded call because I guess the, uh, the computer, it's, it doesn't know what to do with uh, zero as the set temp. I didn't put plus or minus in there either, so that's probably, I mean, that could be a factor in it. Did that guy just get a red light violation? I just saw a flash there, and it was right when he was making uh, his left turn. I wouldn't be surprised if he got a red light ticket, or if he's going to get one, I mean. The Mesa Mexican restaurant. I do like this TA here because there are a whole bunch of places you can eat here. This Mexican restaurant, Hardee's, uh, there's a bunch of other places over Golden Corral. There's a bunch of other places over here on the other side of the the high on the road. Scale the load first. Then overshoot because I can see that this is the exit side of the scale right here. Um, this 
starting to, well, yeah, there's starting to look a little, I mean, there's, yeah, there's still spots here. I don't have to worry. I'm not going to be that long anyway. Oh, yeah. It's a good number of these back-to-back uh, -back spots right here on this side, so I can go with that. truck cap up. Good to go. It's uh, pretty well balanced overall. Got 11,560 on the steers. Come on, dude. I'm waiting for you. 32,120 on the drives, 32,960 on the tandems, and 76,640 gross. That is not a 44,000 pound load. I would have been up around 78, 79,000 if that was 44,000. It's that's lighter than it says. Good, got a minute. We'll have to get fuel. Don't tell me you're just passing through to get over to. Tell me you're stopping out of the damn fucking uh, yeah, good. Oh no. I didn't want to be playing guessing games of what the hell that guy was doing. Windows down, four ways on. about getting the tandems over here first. Don't worry about the tractor. Alright, get the tandems in the middle of the lane first and then I'll come back over. Seven hours and 34 minutes of remaining drive time. Okay, well, it's going to be a wrap on this one. Uh, we're just going to get on westbound 80 from here, get over to York, Nebraska, like I said, and uh, work our way down to I-40 from there. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this and uh, run in and do my, do my thing. And might I don't know, I might stream live with Carl. You might see that or, yeah, well... You'll have already seen that one by the time you see this. So, uh, whatever the case, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one, right? See, uh, it'll probably most almost certainly be in Victorville. <clears throat> Not really willing to give up this load for obvious reasons. So, we'll see you guys then, right? Thanks for watching. See you later.